Hey guys, Wally Renee here, and today we're going to talk about adding a little custom characterization to your anteriors. Now, I think what separates kind of a mediocre milled restoration from a fantastic restoration is the time spent after milling. So I, I would say that the restoration is about 75% done when it comes out of the mill, and literally it's the easiest thing in the world to just add a little bit of love after it pops out of the mill to get it to be something that's just phenomenal for your patients. And I am by no means an artist at all. In fact, I would say quite the opposite. I think that um, this is just really fun and simple to do. So I'm going to kind of talk you through how I do it. And it's it's going to be a case that we're going to go through um, a multiple unit anterior case. So this case here, we're doing some min prep, no prep veneers, and I'm going to just add a little bit of character afterwards. I'm going to show you kind of what I'm doing. But, you know, I will say that if you look at the quote by Gordon Christensen, that the clinical quality of CAD CAM milled restorations varies significantly and is dependent entirely on the quality standards of the clinician. I think that's true to a certain extent. Um, what we don't know, we don't know. And I think, you know, as dentists, nobody's a lot of times sits down and shows us how to do these things and if somebody does you'll be surprised how far it goes and how simple it is and so the first thing is we're just gonna pop off the sprue and we're gonna buzz that thing off it's a it's really remarkable how many burrs are out there that you know you could do this with but I actually tend to just grab the same exact burr that's in my hand piece that I prepped the tooth with which is a 847 KR016 I don't care what manufacturer you use. Um, really, the only thing that's important about diamonds is that they're sharp, so and fresh. So get, you know, get a nice fresh diamond and have some fun. Basically, I like to come from the top down when I remove my sprue, and then right after I remove my sprue, I actually like to add a personal touch to almost the entire facial surface. So you'll see me just kind of rub it a little bit everywhere. What I'm doing is I'm basically kind of just smoothing it out a little bit and adding a little bit of grit to the surface texture right off the bat. Especially the Planeca mills, these restorations are going to come out really smooth and I actually like them to be a little bit more rough. So I'm going to roughen them up, add a little bit of anatomy to it. This is kind of my basic workflow where the very first thing I'm going to do is accentuate the facial embrasures. So these embrasures, I like my embrasures really, really deep on the facials of these anterior teeth and I really like to accentuate the line angles um, and so by kind of curling in the from the mesial line angle over to just shy of the proximal contact you're going to accentuate that facial um, mesial facial lobe which is uh, really prominent. I use the corner of the KR burr there to create some kind of indentations, imbrication type lines or toothbrush abrasion lines or whatever you want to call them. Same thing on the distal facial embrasure, adding a little bit of kind of um, reducing that height of contour there. Same exact diamond to accentuate the facial lobes by accentuating the depression. So when you come in here and you make these kind of triangular shaped depressions, it's going to make those uh, three facial lobes just pop out at you because they're going to be closer to your eye than these depressions. And then I'm going to blend it all by just going back and forth really not rocket science and definitely I'm not as good as a lot of lab technicians at doing this but I feel like it's um, really simple to add a little bit of love to these. Using the corner of the KR to either nick or chip the incisal edge or add some vertical horizontal or and horizontal um, striations to the tooth is also sometimes good depending on what you're matching or how much surface texture you want. And bear in mind a lot of that's going to be filled in with glaze. So although it looks like this at first and you're kind of scared, this is kind of what it looks like after you fire it because the glaze is going to fill in almost all that surface texture unless you want to go back and add it post glaze, you certainly can. But so let's go through kind of how we paint these things now. Super simple. Um, three colors, four colors. Okay, we got brown, which is kind of actually my B shade. Then we have I2 there in gray, we have white, and then we have I1, which is blue. And from these kind of four colors, you could make almost any color you want. That's thinning liquid right there. That is not glaze. That is thinning liquid. There is no glaze applied to this yet. I use spray glaze, so I like to put my, gla my glaze on last. So I 
add the stains. Now, these stains you want to be the consistency of yogurt, not honey. So you want to thin it out a little bit. I add three dots of bee shade to the facial. And then what I want to do is just spread that out. Now, you want to be subtle here, depending on the case, depending on what you're trying to match. Um, you don't need to overdo this. You're not trying to mimic Oreo cookie stains or tobacco stains, um, especially on a multiple unit case. You're just trying to accentuate the subtle glow of dentin shining through the thinner enamel on the cervical third of the tooth. And with a medium translucency or high translucency glass ceramic, you're already going to get that anyway. So you just want to kind of accentuate it a little bit. So now here I am thinning out this I2, which is like a gray color. And I'm making it, like I said, the consistency of, say, yogurt. And I'm adding it to the incisal third in a very kind of rushed, um, very unorganized way. You don't want any kind of straight lines or anything like that. It's just kind of a quick and frantic brushing of that material down super fast. This whole process should take no more than, you know, 30 seconds in reality. Here I'm slowing it down for you guys. Now I'm going to create a custom incisal color that is basically one part blue, one part gray to make kind of um, a color that's going to mimic a little bit more of an intense translucency effect. And I like to accentuate my mesial and distal facial lobes um, with that intense effect. And then sometimes just ever so slightly in the two facial depressions there. Now I'm going to pick up my eye. Um, one, which is this blue color. And I'm thinning it out just a smidge with the thinning um, liquid from Ivoclar. And I'm going to put a few little dots, just two tiniest little dots. It's hard to do blue on Emacs pre-sintered because it's a kind of a violet lilac blue color to begin with. So just be careful when you do use blue. I use it on every, almost every anterior, but I'm very careful. You want to thin that out mesial to distally with a brooch or a spreader or some type of endodontic file, maybe a 10 or an 8. And you're, you're, you're almost want it to be invisible. You don't even want to see it. So that's how much you spread it out. What that's going to do, that blue right there, it mimics like almost complete transparency of the incisal edge where a lot of times you see that in nature when the incisal edge thins out a smidge. So now I'm making a custom cream color with three parts white, one part brown. Okay. And the cream is going to, I don't like to use white, straight out white a lot on the incisal edge. The cream is going to break up the blue just a little bit and add also a little bit of color to the incisal third. And what the cream is also going to do is it's going to increase the value a little bit. Okay, so here it is now actually clinically, and you could see you could barely see anything that was done, which is the point. You don't want to look at it in the patient's mouth and be like, oh my goodness, look at all that stuff that's painted on there. It should just be kind of subtle, kind of natural, and just look a little bit more 3D, a little less monochromatic, and that's all we're trying to achieve here. So I hope uh, you guys learned something from this, and like I said, easiest thing ever to do, and just play around with some glasses and stains and you'll see how um, how fun it actually can be and when your patients see that you take the time to do this they in your eyes you become the artist rather than just the dentist you're you know when you hand characterize their restorations for them it goes a long way um, to know that you cared and that you spent some time trying to match what they wanted so it's also a really cool practice builder